33. A Good Conscience Billy Graham's column recently was an answer to a letter from a woman who wrote, I'm a 43-year-old woman trying to become a better Christian. I know God forgives our sins, but when I was 12 or 13, I used the Lord's name in vain in a moment of anger. Although I ask for forgiveness, I have a haunting fear that I'll always be charged with violating that commandment. Graham's answer was theologically sound, but having never been a long-term pastor, I think he missed the point of the letter. The woman was not confessing. She was really bragging about how tender and sensitive her conscience was. I've heard many such quote-unquote confessions from church members and unbelievers about having stolen a pencil in the second grade, using a dirty word at the age of nine, stealing an apple at the age of eleven, and so on, all of which was supposed to make me think what a sensitive soul I was dealing with. I soon came to realise that I was dealing with very hard consciences and hypocrites who believed their hypocrisy. Are you sure, I would ask, that you have not committed more serious sins in the last month or week or day? If I ask your husband, wife, family or friends, will they report some very real sins that mark your life today? When I catalogued to one supposedly very super sensitive woman her current and very ugly sins, none of which she could deny, I had as mad a woman on my hands as I've ever seen. The point is that people who try to lie to a pastor or to others about their spiritual state are first of all lying to themselves and to God. They may believe their own lies, and they usually do, but God never does. The righteous God trieth the hearts and reins, Psalm 7, 9. Through Jeremiah, God declared, Behold, I will melt them and try them, Jeremiah 9, 7. That is, God will put the total life of men and nations to the test and into the refining fire. A truly tender and sound conscience is alive to the duties and responsibilities of today, to the opportunities God provides us each new morning, and to the requirements He makes of us here and now. A fallen or evil conscience is tied to the past, and the hypocrite, as a fallen man, apes this past-bound orientation of an evil conscience. The unregenerate man's conscience cannot cope with today's moral decisions because he's sick at heart over the past. He's not a new creation with forgiveness and grace radiating through and cleansing his being. He drags around the dead corpses of stale sins. What is your conscience like?